Hey guys, it's Amber and welcome back to another student survival guides video and today I will be talking about the six the six best note-taking methods that I would recommend you use the next time your teacher gives you a lecture or presentation. So I'm currently on my website studentsurvivalguides.com and I will just be reading everything on my blog but yeah let's just get started. So this is how to take efficient notes, the six best note taking methods. I'm going to edit that as soon as I finish this video, but yeah, let's just get started. Taking efficient notes is one of the hardest but most useful skills for a student to learn. And I'm sure at some point or another, a teacher of yours has made you take notes. However, did they really help you understand different or new concepts? If they did, great. Nevertheless, today I will share some of the best note taking methods that you can that can be very beneficial for understanding and studying different topics. I would like you to note that depending on the specific way your brain no learns, the efficiency of these methods may vary from person to person. Equally important, if you don't know the style you learn in, here is an easy online quiz that I would recommend you take. And then of course there's the link. Anyways, let's get started. The first method I would recommend to you is the outline method. And here is just a little, I don't know, visual example of the outline method. And here's a little bit about the outline method. The outline method is a very simple, organized, and time efficient method that is easily one of the most popular methods of note taking. This method requires you to organize your information into different topics and subtopics separated by bullet points and indents and becomes most useful during lectures and other presentations. And just like everything in the world, it comes with pros and cons. So today I'll be sharing pros and cons for every note taking method that I will be recommending to you. So some pros are it gives a clean structure. It's easy to do while focused, reduces editing time, and highlights key points slash information. Some cons are it doesn't work well with topics such as chemistry, and it's unhelpful if lecture doesn't follow a specific structure. Now on to the second method. The second method I recommend to you is the Cornell method. The Cornell method, unlike other methods, requires a little bit of preparation time. This requires you to divide your, to divide your page into three or three or four different sections, two columns and a section at the bottom of the page. The smaller column on the left-hand side is for keywords and questions. The larger column on the right-hand side is for basic notes. For example, I personally follow the outline method in this column because I think it's a great way to blend two great methods together. And then the final column at the bottom is for a summary of the topic. Although the specific method of note taking may seem difficult, most people find that using this method is very useful and efficient for studying. Some pros are it efficiently organizes notes, summarizes all information, and cuts down oh, cuts down review time and extracts main ideas. And some cons are pages need to be prepared ahead of time and requires some review time. Now on to the third method. The third method I would recommend to you is called the doodle notes method. And here is just a little visual again of the doodle notes method. The doodle notes method is specifically designed for visual learners and visual based topics. This method is used to blend visual and linguistic information into long term memory. The specific method to use graphs, doodles, drawings, brief brief descriptions, and etc. to organize your information. This is why the specific style of noting is very useful for science and math related topics. Some pros are it's great for visual learners, too, it makes connections between the brain and information, and it requires very little writing, and it's a very creative way to learn. Some cons are you may need art experience because I'm assuming if you're doing the doodle notes method, you want your notes to be pleasing to the eye. The next con is it can be used for all topics. Now on to the fourth note taking method. So, oh, there it is. My computer's a little slow, so it takes quite a while for it to load all the pictures. However, if you were doing it from any other device, it would pop up in 0.4 seconds. Um, for the map method. And here's just, again, a little, a little visual of the map method. 
The matte method is most efficient when it comes to heavy and intense content because it allows you to organize a lot of information in an organized and structured way. All you have to do is write the main topic at the top, then continue to divide the information into subtopics on the right and left as you go down the page. Some pros to this method are it's visually appealing, allows you to, um, allows you to easily write detailed information in a concise form and can easily be edited. Some cons are you may run out of space um, and can be confusing if the information is incorrectly placed. Now on to the fifth method. The fifth method I recommend to you is called the box method. And here's just kind of a little example of the box method. The box method is a very simple and fairly easy to organize method. This method requires you to group similar concepts together in a box and other unrelated concepts and topics are assigned to other boxes. This method is especially useful during a lecture or presentation that follows a specific structure. Some pros to this method are it easily separates and organizes notes, allows you to focus on one concept at a time, helps you to memorize um, information visually, and is perfect for dig digital note takers. Um, some cons to this method are it's not suitable for every lecture, doesn't work for topics that can't be assigned to specific groups of notes, and requires a little bit of extra time to group the notes together. Now on to the sixth and final method, and this is called the charting method. Sorry. The charting method is the ideal method when it comes to organizing a lot of information involving facts and statistics. This method requires you to organize all the information into different columns similar to the table or spreadsheet, and each individual column represents a unique topic. However, even though many people find this method is efficient for memorizing, many suggest doing this method after class and not during a lecture. Now onto the pros. Information is clearly structured. It makes it easy to review, easy to compare, and finally it makes it easy to memorize the information. However, there's some cons. The cons are it can be very time consuming, can't really be done in class, and doesn't work for not easily categorized information. So yes, that was a lot of information to swallow. Um, you can rewatch the video if you didn't quite understand any specific type of note style. And if you want me to go more in depth into other note taking methods, please just comment that down below. It brings us to the end of the video. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.